So Hess's law, which is the enthalpy change of a reaction, is independent of the pathway taken to get there. There's three reactions here. This reaction here, it's impossible to do that one. But you can do the other two reactions. So by impossible, I mean you cannot get anhydrous magnesium sulfate and add exactly seven water molecules to make exactly magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. But you can take anhydrous magnesium sulfate and seven water molecules and throw it in a bunch more water to make the aqueous magnesium sulfate. That's possible, and that delta H can be measured. And you can buy the heptahydrate magnesium sulfate. Throw that in a bunch of water, and you've again made the aqueous magnesium sulfate. So briefly, what I did in the experiment that's following, I got three grams of this magnesium sulfate and I put it in an insulated container with 45 milliliters of water. And then I did a bit of simple mathematics. I know that delta H for the reaction, it's this reaction, is going to be negative. The mass of what's heated, which is the 3 grams and the 45 grams of water, times specific heat capacity, which we're going to assume is 4.18, the specific heat capacity of water, times the temperature change, then divide that by the moles of the anhydrous magnesium sulfate. And that will get me delta H. The second reaction was I got uh, the hydrated solution, was I got the hydrated crystals. I got six grams of those, and I also put it into another insulated beaker with 45 milliliters of water. Then you can do a similar delta H calculation to work out this arrow. So in this case, delta H is going to be the negative you can argue about, the mass of what's heated, which is the 6 grams of the, an, of the hydrated plus 45 of water, specific heat capacity, assume water, temperature change, and the moles of the heptahydrate. Once you've got those two values, you can use Hess's law to work out this value here. So Hess's law essentially means that the arrows going in the clockwise direction equal the arrows going in the anti-clockwise direction. So clockwise equals anti-clockwise. So in this case, this arrow plus the value of that arrow equals that arrow clockwise equals anti-clockwise. So I did the experiment and you can find the data in the link below. You can do the calculations yourself and work out what you make delta H. So I've got 45 milliliters of water there and there. I want it to get to equilibrium with the room temperature. So I'm gonna to start to record those values. Let me adjust the time to make it uh, a lot bigger than that, 600. Okay, and while that's reaching uh, this thermal equilibrium, I'm gonna measure out three grams of magnesium sulfate. Now this is anhydrous, there's no water in it at all. Doesn't matter if it, if it isn't exactly three grams, it's approximately exactly three grams. So I went a little far, let's put some back. What an expert. Okay, and now we're gonna measure six grams of the magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Again, approximately exactly.
This stuff is obviously cheaper. It's got a bunch of water in it. The reason it doesn't matter exactly how much I put in, because I'm going to do some stoichiometry later and account for that. Alrighty, about six grams. I have a haircut. All right then, so now I'm gonna put these chemicals into the 45 milliliters of water and to make sure none of the energy escapes or not too much, I'm gonna put on this insulated lid. I'm gonna to try to do it at about the same time. Now it's important, oh echo, now it's important to, to swirl it, don't stir it. If you stir it, you're gonna generate some friction. So I'll give it a quick swirl. Okay, so it's so well insulated that we're not losing uh, much energy at all. Uh, you can see the temperature is pretty stable. So I'm gonna stop the experiment and let's look inside. Uh, if I see white crystals, then I've messed it up. I, I didn't dissolve it all, and it's null and void. Oh no, it's all dissolved. Let's check the other one. Oh yeah, and that all dissolved. Okay, so the data is pretty solid.